Easter Sunday in prison for most inmates is just like any other day, and it's easy to forget its true meaning. But the next Easter morn, our Andrew lay in his bunk trying to relate the tragedy of his life to the events of Jesus' passion still fresh in his memory. From his reading of biblical commentary, he'd learned of another meaning to Easter that focused not on Jesus' suffering for mankind's sins, important though that was, but in his resurrection from death to a new life. And though his jaded worldliness still wanted to dismiss the tale as myth, he could not deny the feeling that there was a broader symbolic message of salvation and renewal that applied to all of life's travails. Could Jesus' death and rebirth be a lesson each of us could use in our everyday lives? Perhaps we didn't have to wait for death to experience a resurrection. Perhaps another sort of resurrection, the opportunity to transform our lives, was available to us at every instant through God's grace. Every trouble, every trial, every limitation in life was a crucifixion of sorts. Weren't human beings figuratively lashed to these events as Christ was to the cross, feeling helpless and persecuted? Wasn't God, through His Son, telling Andrew that even his life was worth saving? that hidden in Andrew, the real core of Andrew, stripped of the hardened facade of a career criminal, there still was that little boy who was awed and moved by the powerful church icons of his youth, especially the sanctuary crucifix with its graphically tortured body of Jesus. Andrew closed his eyes to ponder these questions, and Jesus' words drifted into memory, receive the kingdom of God like a child. In his mind's eye, he became the young Andy again, kneeling before the altar with Christ writhing on the cross above, an innocent child struggling to understand how this suffering pertained to him. Then he witnessed a vision unfold in his mind. The cross began to fade away and Jesus' agonized face softened. Then behind Jesus, he saw another figure, different yet the same, a figure clad in robes of glory, a figure that was also Jesus the transformed Jesus, the risen Christ. The wooden cross had disappeared, and in its place was a numinous form, the risen one, that now seemed to be supporting Jesus' limp physical body. The cross had been but the bridge to transcendence. The truth and power of Jesus was in his everlasting spirit. It was a powerful image, a true vision of transformation, and in that instant, Andrew's life too was transformed, and he prayed prayed for forgiveness and that he be allowed to make amends for his past transgressions. When Andrew opened his eyes, he knew what the vision meant for him personally. He must seek beyond his personal crucifixion for his personal resurrection with the faith that Jesus taught through his supreme example. Any human problem is robbed of its controlling power by our faith in its solution. Andrew understood with a fresh clarity that the real cross he bore was not the prison that contained him, but the hate and fear in his heart. It was time to transform himself, to change his heart, to think only of God, of love, of faith, and of hope. If he prayed for these things instead of wasting his hours on thoughts of persecution and revenge, he would receive their blessings, for he too was a child of God. And what of these prison walls? Space and time were no barriers to God. Believe in freedom, and freedom is yours. From that moment, Andrew's attitude towards life did change, and he threw away that razor blade.